Ciao ragazzi, I'm not 100% sure if it's good to be back. That feels like one of the shortest off seasons in my life, despite the fact that there was very minimal football to watch or enjoy in the off season. Usually there's something to keep you going, but it's all back, the stress, but more importantly, my handsome colleague is back to my left, your right, wherever you are watching. Bruno, we're back, baby. Serie A, let's go. It is great to be back. It's fantastic to be back. Um, you know, the off-season's been full of drama, you know, that off-the-pitch drama between sponsorships, missing out on players and everything. But now's the time to put it all to the test. And, you know, it's just good to have football back in general, to say the least. It is good to have it back uh, in general, man, not just um, not just Serie A, but to have all football back in general gives us something to do between the hours of midnight and six o'clock in the morning here in Australia, man. No, nothing that we'd rather do. So in this video, we'll cover uh, Inter's work in the off-season very briefly because we have been updating it regularly on this channel. We'll take a little look at last year's Serie B champions who are now back in Serie A looking to survive the drop. That would be their be-all and end-all goal. We'll talk a little bit about some of the players that might give Inter a hard time on the weekend, a bit of a prediction, and then into Serie A fantasy as well. So... My first question to you, Bruno, we're getting to a new season. We've got a decent amount of players available. My big thing for this is as soon as you see the name Milan Skrinja on the team sheet ready to start on the weekend, I think majority of us will finally get that stress off our shoulders that he could be leaving the club. Are you feeling the same way? Yeah, definitely. I think um, Skrinja was one of those players you cannot get rid of and I've been calling him to become Inter's next captain for a very long time mm -hmm. but um you know it, it's been an off season to forget in the eyes of Inter fans it feels like forever ago we announced we got Lukaku back on loan and yeah. so much has happened since then and it's just it would be good to just see the boys on the pitch the last time we played the, the last time though in Serie A was uh, Lukaku's first game in Serie A, um, we played them round one and he scored in that 4 0 win. And I just see, I, I just think the first 15 games of the season are going to be so crucial because then we go off for one and a half months for the World Cup and Christmas yep. break and so forth. So you really need to put these bottom teams away. And it's something I can really see into doing. That would be great, man. Very well said. I think that's a lot of things that a lot, you know, a bit of a notion that people haven't caught on to yet is that massive World Cup coming in that crunch part of the season where, you know, even though Italy's not going, we are going to be missing a host of critical players either or. So maybe not as much as the next team, but getting those points against uh, lower level opposition are going to be crucial if we are going to hit our season's objectives. This is how Inter is looking at approaching the first game of the season, a way to Lecce, 4.45 a.m. kickoff on a Sunday, which is perfect for the likes of Bruno and uh, myself. How in the world is a 4.45 a.m. kickoff perfect, you ask? Very simple. It's not on Monday. Anything that's not on Monday, we will take the win with both hands, bro. Looking at this lineup, man, it's, it's hard to be upset because... When I do look at the one player that's missing in the starting lineup, it looks as though we've done our job to make sure someone's there to replace him. Not having Marcelo Brozovic in the starting 11 last season, well, you might as well just scratch off the W and call it a, call it a draw at the end of the day. But now we've got a very, very promising, very promising replacement, Vice Brozo in Aslani. And I'm actually excited to see this guy cook because he's very talented. We watched him at Empoli. He's been good in the off-season. What better way than to introduce him to top-level Serie A football than to debut against a team that we should be putting away, Bruno? Yeah, it, it, it will be a great confidence boost for these players. Um, you know, the uh, a lot of the players who Inter did purchase, Bar Lukaku, are coming from teams that aren't in that Champions League challenge and so forth. So it's one of those things where they need to get the cobwebs off very early. And what better way to do it against a team like Lecce, where we, like you said, we should be putting them away. Even if Aslani doesn't get a goal in the back of the net or create, create an assist, he's a part of the team. Um, Inter going into this first game, I think with only the one injury to Mkhitaryan, um, mm -hmm. And I think that's all that there is to report there. So we do basically have a full strength squad at our disposal. And 
I think Inzaghi's doing the right thing here by giving this guy a run. You know, another player to look out for would be Gossens as well on the wing. He didn't get much game time last season with Perisic leaving. He needs to step up. And again, what better way to shake those off-season cobwebs off than against a team like Lecce? But yeah. it's the Serie A. But this is Lecce. This isn't the same Lecce from two seasons ago, three seasons ago. This is Lecce who won the league um, barely, but they still won the Serie B and they've come in for a vengeance. 100% man. That wasn't an easy Serie B uh, league to win last season. I'm sure, you know, if anybody followed it knows that there was something like six or seven points separating first and sixth. And then after sixth, there was still a couple of teams that missed out on the playoffs literally by bare skin. So let's just go through the rest of our lineup and then we'll talk a little bit about who's going to start for Lecce. Uh, it's going to be a nice and short preview for everyone today because there's not too much left to cover after Mo linked up with Gianni and Uncle Sharma on the channel this morning for a great overall Serie A preview. Skrinia, very happy to see him at the back. Obviously, Bastoni with those early rumors to Tottenham squash quickly. We can we know that he's going to have a big season. Are you worried about Stefan de Vrij after declining a little last season, Bruno? Or you think he's out for a bit of redemption this campaign as well? Um, I think he needs to, if he wants a move, if he wants to go somewhere of value, of pedigree and be offered something of decent money, EPL money per se, he needs to perform. If he wants to be a part of this World Cup squad coming up, come November, he needs to perform. And the beauty of having a World Cup in the middle of a season means your players need to maintain their performances in order to make that squad. So you'll see a lot of these players really pushing to get their momentum come mm. into the World Cup. And I think one of the players who the pressure is on is the Fry. When you've got Van yeah. Dijk, when you've got um, Delict as well, Delict as well, who is now performing at Bayern. Mm. Um, you really need to pull out those, pull out those great performances, those games, those game winning, winning performances as a defender. And I just think getting the band back together in the back three, there, it's it's not a back three we've become accustomed to in the last year. You know, yeah. there was a lot of off the field drama with a court case for the fry injuries. Mm -hmm. And all of that. So, look, I think he needs to perform. But I also think the fact that Bremer wasn't secured in the offseason, um, Inzaghi's really putting his faith into the fry, that's for sure. I think you're right, man. I think you're very, very right. Another uh, eye-catching Dutchman on that field where I was honestly convinced if there was going to be a big sacrifice uh, this market, it was definitely going to come from Denzel Dumfries. I thought United under Ten Hag would be very, very curious. I thought Bayern, he fits their system perfectly. He'd absolutely thrive in a Bundesliga stat padding on that position. And then obviously you had the interest from Chelsea as well. It looks like with the 20 million we've wrapped up for Pinamonti, plus looking to send uh, Cassade out as well for probably around 9 to 10. We might have just bought ourselves another year. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the doom and gloom of the next summer Mercato when that comes around, as I'm sure we're, we're all looking forward to. But as of right now, big bad Denzel will be starting against Lecce. And as I said to you over the phone before we got on camera, if I see a player starting for Inter against Lecce, we don't usually expect Marotta or Zilio and definitely someone like Inzaghi after the hand he was dealt with losing Lukaku so close to kickoff last season, they're not going to stand for one of these starters leaving after match day one. Skriniar and Dumfries are probably here. Dumfries at the very least until January. So big up Denzel. I, I reckon he's going to, I reckon Denzel Dumfries is going to really enjoy having Romelu Lukaku up there moving around. Yeah, look, I agree a hundred percent. Seeing Skriniar on the field gives me that confidence that he won't be sold. And mm. the price that, um, Marotta set for him has really ruled out almost any other team other than PSG who aren't willing to meet it. Chelsea, on the other hand, they've still got a lot to do this transfer window. These new owners have come in with a point to prove and there's a lot of rumours for a lot of players that they're going for. So it would not surprise me after match day one, a nice offer comes in at 20, 25 million for dumb freeze and it might be an offer too good to resist from the well, likes was, of Zhang. There was rumours uh, that Chelsea were going to bid 30-35. So I don't, I don't know if we'll take anything less than that now, unless you think we're going to get proper desperate on the last day. Yeah, look, I, I don't think unless 
you know, there's some confidence that there will be another quick fire signing, but I just I've always been against it, the transfer window overlapping the start of the season. I feel you should start the season with your squad and not still have that chance to offload a player or buy a player. Um, so essentially, I think the only player that has any bearing on leaving the squad come transfer deadline day would be Dumfries. And I really only see him going to one place, and that's Chelsea. But yeah. again... They've got their eyes on a lot of players, and I think Dumfries is a bit lower on their list and not as much as a priority. In saying that, if he stays with us and Netherlands have a fantastic World Cup campaign come January, that 25, 30 million is looking more like 45, 50 million because we all know how player prices get inflated so much after an international competition. 100%. And now you're thinking like a Beppe as well as a Bruno. Uh, Lula up front. I'm excited because at the end of the day, we really needed to make sure Eden Dzeko wasn't having to put in a 95-minute shift as a number nine. And right now we've got a 90 who should be able to put in 90 plus five in stoppage time as well in Romelu Lukaku. Big Rom is back. And I think I said this a couple of times while he was under Conte in match previews. I don't care if it comes off Lukaku's ass and goes into the back of the net. As long as he gets on the score sheet, that guy's confidence stays up all the time. This could be a good game for Rom to get a goal or two to kickstart his into campaign. Uh, look, I don't even think a goal is what he needs. I just think he's got the respect of most of the players on this pitch already. Mm. And I just think he needs to show that he's picking up where he left off. And all the rumours of, you know, everything that happened at Chelsea over the last 12 months have now subdued and he comes out and he shows, well, this is what I'm capable of. I think that, honestly, it is a big, big move for him coming into the squad match day one with, you know, the Curva, who they've come out and said, we're glad you're back, but we don't trust you. You need to earn that trust and respect back. And I don't know, a lot of people who are into supporters know when the Curva makes a point, they mean it. And they did it with Icardi, and we saw what happened there. I just think Lukaku's a different, he's cut from a different cloth compared to Icardi, and He's not got to do it for himself. He's got to do it for the supporters as well as the team behind him. At the end of the day, yeah, he moved. Yeah, he put Inter in a better financial position at that point in time. But they brought him back. And, you know, yeah, we didn't, we brought him back on loan, but we're paying everything. So, yep. you know, he, we're treated, we need to treat him like he's our own. And yep. he needs to be treated like he is our own. And he's got to put performances like he is our own. So at the end of the day, yeah, getting on the score sheet, I think he scored the third goal in that 4-0 round one fixture last time. Yeah. Uh, if he gets on there, even if he gets an assist, we just want to see that Lula connection happening again. It was against Lecce as well, wasn't it? That's crazy. That was the one where Kandreva scored the 45 yard and made the face at the camera. I remember it now. I completely forgot it was against Lecce, actually. There you go. How ironic is that? Speaking of... Sky Italia had an absolute mare with this lineup. Maybe they're sponsored by Digital Bits this season. I don't know. But anyway, we've got a good good signing for them is Falcone in goal from Sampdoria. He had a decent season for them last season. I actually think he has a good one against Lecce. There's a couple of players in this side where even if Lecce get relegated at the end of the season, a couple of them will be looking to fit um, a move elsewhere. Uh, I don't know too much about the players besides uh, Gabriel, who's coming from Spal. Uh, Di Francesco as well, who's played for Empoli. Frabotta, who most notably in the squad is on loan for uh, from Juventus. And he actually looked very happy holding up those pictures of the Lecce jersey, probably because he knew he'd get absolutely no minutes under Allegri. So it is a good move for Frabotta. And I think he will actually cause some problems this season. But the number 42, keep an eye out for him. I don't know how to pronounce his name properly, so I'm just going to go with what I've heard online. Um, Humand or Holman, something like that. Danish player. He's actually been on the shortlist of a few big clubs in the world. Intel was one of them about a season ago. So he's already played for the Denmark under-21 side as well. Um, coming from Copenhagen, he's got a pretty high ceiling, this guy. He's into his second year in a four-year contract at Lecce. I expect him to create some trouble in midfield for us, especially with Brozovic being out in this one. 
but I think our physicality will be able to, um, you know, outdo them for, for the best part about it. Bruno, are you scared that Lecce is going to make this a real sort of, you know, nitty gritty sort of fixture? Are we looking at a really horrible looking 1-1 scoreline or do you think that we can take care of business here, bro? Yeah, look, this Lecce squad is a big change from the Lecce squad, which won the Serie B last season. And they've had a terrible run in to the um, in their preseason. I think three games, three losses. Uh, you mentioned. Them, sorry to interrupt. Did they already get knocked out of the Coppa Italia? I cannot. I think that's they all right. I'll look at it. Cittadella. They lost three two to Cittadella. They all lost right. three there two. But they're already yeah. out of a competition before it even started. Mm. Um, you mentioned Falcone coming from Sampdoria. They also yeah. got Askilson from Sampdoria as Sampdoria, well. Yeah. They're number seven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like you mentioned, the Hujlmand and Di Francesco coming into the squad with Fabrotta, you know. So in their um in their starting lineup, we that's this is again, this is a predicted starting lineup, guys. So don't hold us to these are the players that are gonna be playing on the match day. But um, you know, their whole left side, so 10-7, 24, as well as their goalkeeper, it's their first game for this club, four out of the starting eleven. And I really can't see them causing too much trouble. But the issue is, even Sky Italia, they don't have pitches for half of these people. They don't know who half these people are. Again, it's a lot harder to face an opponent when you don't know who they are compared mm. to an opponent you do know who they are and you can structure yourself for them. So, look, overall, I think it should be a comfortable run in the park for Inter. It's a fantastic yeah. fixture for them to start their campaign with. Um, because I think match day four is last year, match day five is AC Milan. So yep. you really need to get the ball rolling now um, and apply some pressure at the top of the table if that's where Inter and that's where we think they're going to be. At the same time, there's also going to be Champions League. So these are the points you need to lock up and secure at the start of the season yeah. so quickly because, yep. you know, it's it, it can come down to the back end of the season like it did last year. Uh, I think we lost by two points. And a draw here would mean those two points already behind. Yep. So 3-0, 4-0. I can't see them getting on the score sheet. Um, but I've seen stranger things happen. 100%. I'm going to go with 3-1. I think we do win the game. I think they do get on the score sheet, not necessarily due to their merit of attack uh i just think that we might be a little bit slow to adjust in the first few games this season i think that we do get the three goals and i'm gonna go for a goal each for martinez and lukaku and i'm just gonna throw a shot out of nowhere i reckon maybe hakan gets a goal um speaking we haven't really mentioned him much you got high hopes for hakan this season because you know had we actually won that scudetto last season we'd be sitting here calling it one of the sign the signings of the decade man but with all, with all, it was I a good think, signing, man. He had a great first season. Yeah, I, I think he he declined. But I wouldn't say so much declined at the back end of the season, but he was a lot less noticeable come match day 25 onwards. He did have a stellar December, which was, I think it was November, maybe potentially November and December. He was just phenomenal. Everything he touched turned to gold. But I just feel... He did what he needed to do. Um, and I think especially after losing Ericsson right before the start of the season um, with the issues that he had, we needed someone. And Hakan had the Serie A experience and he did play well. I do have high hopes for him this season. I feel he needs to take more control of that midfield, especially if Aslani is vice Brozo and we will be seeing him starting games as well as, um, you know, Brozovic not. So, and I just feel Barella's maturity level isn't where it should be to lead that midfield. So I think Hakan really needs to step up and make his mark. Again, we haven't seen Hakan and Lukaku um, link up and it could be a match made in heaven. 
Really good, man. Well said. So Bruno's going for a big win. I'm going for a comfortable win. Let's see what happens. And uh, we will be here for a match reaction. I'll be here at 6.45 a.m. ready to go. Before we move on to our Serie A fantasy sides, I've got to ask Bruno's opinion because it's uh, not divided. Majority of people are in love with it. I'm on the fence. I like it. I'll probably get it. Away kit. What are you saying? It's a weird one, eh? I actually... Everyone, everyone's talking about colors and stuff. I, I see this as Inter going back to its roots. Internazionale, okay. the international team of Italy, and they've got the wealth. Um, there's a bit of criticism that the badge is over Italy. Well, you really got to understand the badge is over Italy for the simple fact is they're an Italian club. And mm. they owned Italy last, not last season, the season before. And they plan on owning Italy again. But... I think it was a South American team went with something similar. It was a white and grey. And oh, oh, it might have been Atletico Minero, man. I'm yes, not too that's it. sure. Atletico Minero. They um and Owen and uh Owen and yeah, it was, yeah. It in their series. It is very similar to this. Yeah. I love it. It is something different. You that's what you want to see with your away jerseys. Uh you want to see something different to play in. Um, you know, you look at Man City, I don't know if it's their away kit or their third kit, but it looks like an AC Milan jersey. Mm. So, you know, you want to see something creative. We've gone down the path of Sprite. We've gone down the path of, you know, your whites and everything else. I think this is a fantastic jersey. And I just think when you've got it in front of you, it's something you fall in love with. So I'm waiting for it to, uh, to hit the shelves and I'll be definitely getting us one. Nice one, bro. Much gratitude in advance. We are two members away from having a hundred signing up to our fantasy league. So if you are someone that's watching this video and you haven't signed up for our fantasy league, do us brothers a favor and make sure that you are tipping us over to triple digits. It's going to be a very, very good fun league this season, which we're going to get kicked off right now with the banter code is up on the screen. D zero F T four P nine four. You can see it scrolling around the bottom, and it's also in the description of the video. You're going to go and sign up for the City R Fantasy Worldwide League. But most importantly, make sure you pick your team carefully. Keep one eye on the rest of the Mercato. I've got one eye on Giovanna Simeone making a late move somewhere else. But as of right now, Bruno, I'm pretty confident I'm picking up points. Rafael Leao is a forward. He's not a midfielder. But that little hack is going to pay some dividends. Let's hope Cristiano Berraghi is scoring as many goals as he was last season. And I've put Bremer there for the, the double-edged sword. If he plays well, I get the fantasy points. If he plays crap, I get to banter the Juventini for another week about signing, <laughs> signing that player. But what do you think about fantasy this season, man? That's my team up there. I'll leave it up for about 10 more seconds, and then I'll go and quickly search for yours. Yeah, look, I, I think fantasy is a great way to just create that extra banter. Um, and it, it, it sort of forces you to do your research into other teams as well. So, Ranocchia there at Monza, <laughs> it had to be done. You had to get that done, didn't you? But, yeah, yeah. look, it, it's fantastic. And I do think us at Inter Worldwide will be throwing something into the, the direction of the overall winner. But... Look, I think it's um, definitely something that uh, they've already put me on page two because I know it's where just, I finished last season. It's just ridiculous, mate. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the Cristiano Messi's, mate. <laughs> Cristiano Messi. It, it's definitely fun. It's banter. Um, it's definitely banter, something you can throw at your friends. You can't have you see my team. Have you, picked your, have you picked your team yet? Yeah, I have. Uh, let me call my team. Oh, wait. Uh, I think I've gone into, like, previous rounds. I'm not too sure, man. Let me uh, take control. I will chuck uh, my... Uh, That's all right. You get yours up and I'll speak for the time being. The reason I put Ranocchia in there is because he's just going to get minutes for Monza. He's going to score headers. He's going to score bicycle kicks. He's going to just be like, he's going to be rejuvenated, bro. They're going to be calling him Ronaldo Occhio, bro. Trust me. Wait for it. Lukaku also. Oh, we've got some like players in there. I like your team, bro. It's, a, it's another team that can seriously get points. It's I like definitely in there. there. I like um, Dybala in there. Your Dybala in there is like my layout pocket in midfield. Yeah, and um, I'm worried about Milinkovic Savic. I have a feeling he will be going somewhere. Um, I think, yeah. before the end of the transfer. But, hey, 
Look who I had to put in my team. Nah, we both did it. I did Rokia, you did Vecino. <laughs> I had to have Vecino there. But, yeah, look, it, it, it's very hard come start of the season because there's been a lot of internal moves within the Serie A. So whoever played well at one club, you don't know they're going to play the same at another club. So it would be very interesting to see how overall goes. But we're going to have a lot of banter this season because, you know what, I'm not joining Match Day 20. I've joined from the beginning. I can't believe this Vecino merchant is still going, bro. I can't believe you're still going with this, man. Hey, you're very loyal. I have to be loyal. We got rid of Pinamonti for $20 million. <laughs> That was this morning. Next, we'll be saying Gagliardini's going and... You know, I don't need my heart broken twice in the one season. Who knows, man? Maybe they all end up doing so well that our fantasy team ends up looking like Pinamonti, Gagliardini, Vecino, Ranocchio. <laughs> all of a sudden, your banter era Inter is now your high-achieving fantasy at different clubs. Bruno, any parting words for the viewers? We've been going for almost 30 minutes. That's where we're going to wrap up our first match preview of the season. Uh, Forza Inter, let's get it done. Uh, you know, the season hasn't started yet, so don't write us off just yet. It's going to be tougher, but I said to you earlier today, this is going to be, on paper, this looks to be one of the most competitive Serie A seasons in a very long time. Exactly right. Thank you very much for joining me, brother. And we will see you plenty this season. Thank you very much for everybody that tuned back to watch this video. There will be plenty more content coming. Make sure you like, subscribe, and definitely comment and let us know if you are new. We'll see you soon from all of us here at Inter Worldwide. Forza Inter, Forza Inter Worldwide.